Hello everyone, this is Blue with The Colors of Gaming, and today we're going to be talking about Contra Rebirth. Contra Rebirth released on the Wii in 2009, which is 10 years ago, Blue. Correct. Got some age to it, even though I didn't really realize it upon playing through it again, but it still looks extremely well today. The sprites are just really good, and there's tons of things on screen at almost all times. This game is definitely really fast and frantic, like most Contra games. Definitely gives a good throwback to the Super Nintendo days of Contra, all of the good and none of the bad of that era. There's just explosions and missiles and gunfire going everywhere, just like a typical 80s action movie. When we originally played this, which was 10 years ago, we're knocking on death's door over here at COG. This was like our first Contra game, both blue and eyes. I think that this made us interested in retro gaming. I definitely say so. I didn't consider it in, until that point, and that's when I got introduced to Cinemassacre and all these different different retro and older games that I never got a chance to play when I was younger. Around this time in 2009, there wasn't a whole lot of 2D platforming, especially shooters going out. And I remember hearing about Contra Rebirth and actually talking to older people and them telling me how awesome Contra was. And I downloaded it instantly and me and Blue just played this for days. We've played this game hundreds of times. I just remember just playing the crap out of it on every single difficulty. We definitely did. So now we're gonna dive right into the game play where it's just like your typical Contra side scroller shooter high pace high speed but with a lot of risk and reward involved and you get a lot of different weapons to choose from you have your base machine gun but you also can get upgraded to a spread shot and a laser and even a homing rocket launcher the guns are really awesome my favorite it's the spread gun I really love it because you can clear like a whole room just with one gun my personal favorite is the laser it doesn't spread as much as a spread gun but but it gives a lot of high power in one shot, so I like using it on bosses. There's a bunch of different characters in this game as well. You got the main two Contra guys that look like 80s action stars, and they're really cool. But the ones that I remember playing the most is Pliskin and Brownie the robot. Pliskin is my favorite, just his character design. Something you don't see very often, an anthropomorphic lizard wearing body armor and tactical gear. And he's a good guy. I love his animation. Each different character, how they move, jump, and crawl up walls is, is different. For Brownie, she has these spider legs that come out of her back, and Pliskin, he crawls up the wall like a lizard or Spider-Man, and it, it's just ve very entertaining just to see the different types of animation for the different characters. Brownie is actually my favorite, and I forgot how cute she is. She's shorter than the rest of them. What that means is that her hitbox is a lot smaller, and it's easier to get past people with Brownie. Another thing that I like, when she dies, a little flower pops out, and can you say maximum adorable? I just love it. It's so much personality was so little. I think that's one of the things that makes Contra Rebirth so great. One of my personal favorite aspects of the game is the level design. The level design is very in intricate to where none of the levels feel the same and the layouts are so different. A tactic that would have worked in level two or three isn't necessarily going to work in level three or four. One minute you're playing just this average running gun game, then the next you're doing like this really intense platforming. I think that that's awesome. All while dodging bullets, jumping over bullets, holding on to rockets. It gets it's insane really fast with Contra Rebirth, and that's one of my favorite things about the game. Some of the Mode 7 effects that were very famous with, with the SNES are represented here, and I think they do such a great job. You're about to fight this mini boss, you see it falling towards this glass, and then it breaks through the glass halfway into the ship and halfway in space, and just the scaling and the rotation, something that the SNES was known for, it's represented perfectly here. And you can tell that they're not like 3D models. These are two dimensional models that are just coming at the screen and I think that that's super cool. Speaking of the level design, let's just jump right into the levels and talk about the various bosses that you'll be fighting. The first one is a space centipede and it's really fun. Blue and I realized during this playthrough that this game is much easier with two people. It's mainly because you can position yourselves so that you're both shooting at two directions and with this centipede it's a great example. In his first form when he comes through the window you can have one person stand on a platform to the right of him and just shoot at him while the other person is below shooting up and it is able to take out these little protective petals I would say and eventually you can expose his eyeball and get to him. Which in my opinion I think it makes it that much more fun being, being able just to play old school style on the couch w with a buddy just having a good time and not only is this just a great boss fight but it really tells you what to expect from here on out. I mean you're fighting this centipede in space no shirts required falling towards the earth. It's just insane and crazy. I feel like the game developer 
developers were like, okay, we're here to have a good time. You're here to have a good time. Let's do it. Once you think you're doing one thing, it always ends up that you're doing another because right after that first part of the boss, you're sucked out into space and you have to do a ton of platforming. Taking away what you originally were doing, which was getting a stance going, taking out different parts. Now you can't do that because there's a bunch of platforms and there's a centipede slithering its way across the screen. It's fucking epic. This is one of the coolest things in the game. I loved it. It's a great introduction to it. Following your crash into the earth unscathed wearing only combat boots and a pair of pants, you're introduced to the boss of this level right in the beginning. This giant robot thing that loses its head and then as you're chasing it through this city infested with this lizard army, you're met with these walls that pop up which is definitely like a little easter egg or curtain call to the original Contra that had these throughout. But when you do get to fight this boss, he's a big robot but he's jumping all over the screen and my favorite part about the boss fight is the killing blow is his head that flew off in the beginning of the level comes back and hits him and that's what kills him. It's awesome. You fight this guy like three times. He just will not die but that killing blow is hilarious. It totally takes him out and honestly I didn't even notice. I always wondered where the head came from but now I understand that's from the beginning of the level. Even though we've played this game a hundred times I don't know how I missed that but it's awesome. I was thinking about the first Contra as we played this because of those walls. I would say that this game is a lot easier than that first one and that's not really a bad thing it's definitely not as difficult it's a great introduction to contra that's what it was for me and red was just our first contra game and even 10 years later we still love going through it while these first two levels were mainly about running from left to right just shooting everything in your way this next level takes place on top of a truck it's going as fast as it can and as it's going there's these camel robot things i don't know what the hell they are but they're cool i guess you're just going through this level and a bunch of enemies are trying to kill you while riding rockets because fuck it this is contra you come up against this cyborg ninja villain and he's one of the mini bosses i would say that he's probably my favorite i actually really like dodging the different shurikens that he's throwing at you i really enjoy that i think that's super fun you have to be really careful and it's really precision based it just goes to show again that each level is different than the one before and never are they repeating this is very heavily platforming based after that guy you're eventually thrown off of the truck and you have to run onto those camel things that I was talking about. This truck is just hitting into the camel things and you're just trying to get past them. It's a lot of fun. I think if I was to pick one, this is probably my favorite level. It's just crazy just to see all this stuff that's happening on screen and then following that you do fight this boss where he shoots these missiles at you and you have to shoot the missiles to fire back at him. What did you think of that boss? I thought it was very interesting because as soon as you're done shooting the missiles it shows that he's damaged. You think the boss is over and the top of it pops off and now you got a whole second stage to that boss. With two players this boss is pretty good. It's pretty easy. One player this dude is a bitch. Oh, I hate very it. Very brutal. I think that I have thrown the controller so many times just because of this boss when I was playing single player but two players it's awesome. And following this level you get on this hang glider thing it's being delivered down this shaft by these two little helicopter robots and you're just having to hang on and shoot enemies as you're going down and you start to feel the rhythm for it I guess is what you would call it all of a sudden those robots blow up and you are dropping straight to the bottom full speed with nothing to break your fall so as you're falling down the shaft you're blowing everything up shooting down hoping that you're not gonna die and that you're hitting some sort of enemy going from our favorite level to our least favorite level I don't know if it's possible to actually get through this level without dying I've never done it me either there's no way for you to know what's below you until it's too late and there's not nearly enough reaction time to avoid any oncoming enemies. The next room though, it redeems it because there's a bunch of lava and you have to platform from one part to the next. I didn't think it was that bad and there's not very many enemies. The platforming in this is done really well and I really think it's because of how tight the control scheme is to where if these controls were sloppy in any way, I feel like the whole game itself would fall apart, but everything it just works and functions like it's supposed to. Well, the platforming is very forgiving because your characters can grab on to the sides because of the amount of projectiles going around on the screen at all times they had to do this and i'm happy that they did because otherwise this game would probably be impossible and following this you'd come into contact with this rock golem giant you have these blocks of spikes at the top of the screen coming towards you while the boss is punching to break them so you're having to avoid being punched by the boss while avoid the spikes up above a multitude of times i've died just by jumping out of my sure reaction to avoid enemy 
hits and each level and boss is different to where you have to change up your tactics you have to figure out what guns work best against which enemy or, or which environment it's definitely a nice game changer to where it's not the same thing all the time with every previous boss you're wanting to not stay in one spot keep jumping so that you're not hit this dude i think barely has any projectiles and is just punching up at you meaning that if you jump up which is what you've been trained to do you're gonna die i think that that's awesome it just switches up the gameplay a lot by punishing you for something that it's already taught you to do i think it's good it's a bad habit that the game creators want you to get out of so after this part you go into this spaceship and i just have to say the background in this is amazing it's probably the creepiest thing i've seen in like a retro style game it has a bunch of faces and it's really grotesque me and blue are both looking at it just like oh that's cool this level is kind of a mix of everything that you've done so far i think there's parts where you have to grab onto things this is a lot of jumping and platforming while dodging bullets and enemies i think this is a great final level probably in the middle of the level i would say there's a bunch of these crab man mutated things that are really creepy and you have to just fight off the horde i love this part it's really intense you literally have to just keep pressing forward to push them back to get to the final boss which in my opinion this boss is a great culmination of everything you've seen up to this point you just have to dodge things you got to be jumping you got to be hiding there's little enemies that come at you as you're fighting the boss the thing i thought was kind of interesting in game developers if you're listening if you do this in your game i will buy your product if you have the final boss where the enemies that come after you on the side are bosses you've previously defeated i will sign <laughs> you see the centipede thing again and it's fucking cool because you know that this thing is the ruler of those things that you just killed one thing we haven't really touched on but i feel like helps bring the game together is the music and the soundtrack it's not anything you're probably gonna listen to doing your reg regular things or jamming out at home but it complements the game so well it helps add to the immersion some of these you will be humming i think after you're done playing the game specifically the boss fight music is so cool cool i just love a lot about it it's kind of an 8-bit sounding soundtrack but it sounds a little bit more i would say advanced than that and it just feels great it's one of those things that just ties the game all together it's like a pretty little ribbon on a great present so with all these things said blue would you recommend this game i can't you can't i cannot why is that i love this game very dearly and it's one of those games i can always go back to no matter what but i can't because the wii shop is close down there's no way to buy this game that's right ladies and gentlemen this game does not exist anymore if you have a way to play this game i'd say definitely take that avenue it's definitely a great play you won't be disappointed thankfully there are ways to still play contra rebirth you might just stumble upon an old pirate's cove and be able to find it somewhere buried in the sand it's a little difficult but the game is great this is colors of gaming signing out